to Primitive Organic Garden. Thank you all for tuning in today. It is the 24th of April. We've had a very long, cool spring. We haven't really started getting the high temperatures that I'm accustomed to here. Um, it's been great. I've really been enjoying the cool nights. We've been getting down to the low 60s, upper 50s at night. It's been about 80, 85 in the daytime. It's been fairly dry the last couple of days, which has been great. <clears throat> Normally we have way more water here than we can handle. This is a little uh, dragon cayenne pepper plant that I overwintered. I uh, <clears throat> planted this <clears throat> from a seed in like February of 2018 and it started producing fruits by August of 2018 and then I kept it in the uh, hoop house all winter and it's only in a little tiny one gallon pot from the dollar store that costs 99 cent for the pot and I think it's just in some homemade compost but I mean it's just loaded with cayennes more than I know what to do with I need to just stick them in a big jar of vinegar but um Anyway, sorry I've been out of touch. I just got a new phone. I didn't have a phone for a while. Let me give you all a quick garden tour update. Still got some uh, collard greens hanging on in buckets. Got some pepper plants I overwintered in buckets. Another dragon cayenne. Some oregano and malabar. Swiss chard. My citrus trees from seed are looking good. Got a chocolate habanero I overwintered. Pepper on I overwintered. Another chocolate hob. Another citrus tree I started from seed. Another citrus tree I started from seed. Another chocolate hob. This is where the greenhouse was. I planted a new uh, little garden space here. I seeded all this with tomatillos and purple bush beans. We'll see how that works out. I got some seedling trays of uh, shishito peppers and some other stuff coming up. Getting the last of the blue peas. We're getting to the point where the weather's getting too hot for peas. We'll have to switch to cow peas pretty soon. But, um, still harvesting some peas. Got some peas here. You can push peas into May here if you do them in the shade. You know, if you want to do peas in November and December and January, you got to put them in full sun. If you want to do peas in March and April and put them in part sun, part shade. If you want to try to push peas into May and June, you need to do peas in the shade. These are some English peas here, but we'll just switch to cow peas pretty soon once it gets a little warmer. Got lots of parsnips that are just now starting to grow, which is kind of weird because they're supposed to be a winter vegetable and they don't like hot weather and I don't think they're going to tolerate the summer here this year and make it to produce some roots next year, so I don't even know what I'm going to do with those. might just chop them all down. We got a new compost pile here. Pretty dope. Uh, is a blue hubbard winter squash. I'm pretty excited about that. I hope I get a good fruit off this one. Blue hubbard winter squash. Speaking of blue stuff, with some blue popcorn. Blue popcorn. This is a blue dandelion. This is about to make flowers pretty soon. This is a uh, chicory burgundy stem blue dandelion. It's gorgeous. I don't really eat a whole lot of it, but it's pretty to look at. Mm, look at all that powdery mildew. Mm. Got lots of fava beans I'm scared of because there's a 12% chance I have a G6 PD deficiency and might react really poorly to fava bean exposure, pollen, or food. So I haven't gone near the fava beans. They've been ready to harvest for weeks and I want to chop them down and plant tomatoes where they're at, but I'm just too scared to go near the favas. So maybe somebody who doesn't have G6 PD deficiency should 
come help me chop down all my fava plants. But anyway, look at this big old mater. Wow, that's gigantic for being in a container. That's a huge tomato plant. But it's not, uh, it's, even though it's the largest, oh no, it's got some fruits on it. Yeah, it's got some fruits. Look at him. Wow. Big old collard ring. But I got maters that are even bigger over here. Har. So it's April 24th and I got huge tomatoes, but you know some years I have them earlier than this. I ain't trying to brag about having tomatoes on April 24th because there's been years where I had tomatoes like this on Christmas. There's been years where I had tomatoes like that on the end of February. Got some bell peppers coming on, but damn squirrels keep eating them. Ugh. Damn squirrels. I just bought this peach tree the other day. It's kind of a drunk purchase, but... It's going to be nice. This is my tomato box for the year. I decided to dedicate a 4x4 four four space to just tomatoes. I usually don't do a lot of tomatoes here because it's just too damn wet and too damn hot and they all get diseases and wilt and don't set fruit. But if you get them in early enough, you can have a decent spring crop of tomatoes before it's hot enough for all the insects and diseases to come out. And you can also try to do some in the fall, you know, right before the first frost and get some that way. But um, I did devote 4x4 four four space to tomatoes this year in this little box here. And I got a couple different varieties. Potato leaf, and then I think one of them's like a wild currant. Oh, oh, look how cute. They're so tiny. But yeah, I think that's like a wild currant or some shit. Wow, that should be the, uh, what's it called, the, uh, photo for the video, the thumbnail. But, uh, anyway, things out here have been, uh, just overwhelming, you know. I got a lot more garden space than I had last year with the addition of wood chips and tons of you know, huge fabric pots. Wow, look at those looking all ripe and shit. Probably got 50 different tomato plants out here this year. A lot of them are in big ass pots. Some of them are in the ground. This one here is in the ground. It's just, it's out competing the corn. This was a corn patch, and I just stuck one little tomato at the end of the corn patch because the tomato was like weak and sad looking and it needed a, needed a home and I didn't have anywhere to put it. It's been out here since like February. I had to put a you know, frost cover on it a couple times, and now it's a gigantic tomato bush that's taking over the corn patch and out competing the corn in places. It's kind of funny. These are some uh, sunchokes here. Some people mistakenly refer to these as Jerusalem artichokes, but they're not from Jerusalem and they're not artichokes, they are sunchokes. They're very closely related to the sunflower. It's a, a plant native to North America. It looks just like a sunflower, it grows just like a sunflower but it will tolerate much colder temperatures than sunflowers. And it also produces a edible root that is very similar to potatoes. And you cook it just like potatoes and it's delicious. It's a very like rich, complex, nutty flavor. It's full of vitamins and minerals. It also has an odd form of carbohydrate that's uh, called inulin. And it's a type of carbohydrate that basically has no effect on blood sugar. So even if you're diabetic, you can eat all the sun chokes you want and it functions like a potato, but doesn't impact blood sugar like a potato so that's kind of a cool fact but uh, sunchokes grow really 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 well in South Carolina if you can keep them dry uh, they do good up in the sand hills up in the upstate in a place like the low country we have way too much water we get more rain than we can deal with and sunchokes do not like uh, wet feet very similar to sunflowers or peppers um, a lot of you know sunflowers don't do well here if they get you know soaked but if you grow in pots this one's in like a huge like 30 gallon pot and so because it's in a pot it's probably not going to have the same types of issues with 
the flood stress that it would in the ground. And I'm hoping that I get you know tons and tons of sunfish this fall. You generally harvest the plants, you know, uh, right before your first freeze or so, and uh, you can save some of the tubers to replant for the following spring. It's also the type of thing where if you're harvesting them, you're probably not going to get every single tuber out of the soil. So if you leave one or two tubers behind, even by accident, that's going to be sprouts for the next year. But, um, they're very prolific. You know, a very good friend of mine gave me some uh, sunchoke tubers two years ago, and I planted them and forgot about them, and I thought they disappeared. And then, lo and behold, I had all these sunchokes this past fall, more than I knew what to do with. And, they had just been hiding and quietly growing in secret, you know, underneath a bunch of stuff, shaded out. And I end up pulling up, you know, pounds and pounds and pounds of sunstroke roots. And uh, it was just a, a wonderful blessing. It was a much, much of a surprise, but um, I saved some of them and now I'm going to have them for a while. These are some collards that overwintered. Man, these were so sad looking in the fall. They were tiny little things covered in aphids. And uh, I didn't spray them, I didn't do anything, I just let them be. And finally, all these lady beetles came in and ate all the aphids, and then we got a couple frosts and freezes, and all the insects died, and the collards just blossomed. And now that it's, you know, getting into summer, these collards are huge and starting to flower, and we need to eat them all pretty quick. But, uh, anyway, thank you all for tuning in today. Um, it's been a... It's been a pretty good last couple of weeks out here in the garden. Things are growing prolifically. I've just been kind of busy and my phone hasn't been working, but I planted some stuff in the front yard recently. I uh, planted a bunch of tomatoes and flowers in a big bed in the front yard for everyone to see. And I also uh, bought a pineapple guava plant and I bought a peach tree and I put them in big old pots. This is a shade garden that I recently planted. This is the uh, kind of the northeast facing side. It's uh, shaded out by the shed on one side and shaded out by the house on the other side and gets very little sunlight. Um, and nothing's ever grown here. And recently I decided, why don't I fill this in with compost and leaves and more compost and I'll plant some shade tolerant stuff like pole beans and maybe some cucumbers and um, we'll see. So um, I think the pole beans and the cucumbers are going to start climbing this trellis here pretty soon. Everybody's going to be happy and I'll have a new garden space here. I need to chop down all this crimson clover and all the barley. The, uh, the park's getting on to me about my crimson clover and my barley. They put a note on the door saying, you know, I need to cut my grass or I'm going to get fined $75. And I said, well, you know, technically barley is a grass, but crimson clover is not a grass. Crimson clover is a dicot. Grass is a monocot. Barley is a grass, so I guess I should harvest all the barley. But if I harvest all the barley, I shouldn't have to cut down the crimson clover because it's not a grass. And they told me I need to cut the grass, and crimson clover is not a grass. Look at that giant pumpkin there. It's going to be way too hot weather for the thing, and it's going to be sad, but anyway, it'll be fun to look at. This is what's left of my lettuce patch for this winter. Now that it's getting too hot, I'm not going to have a whole lot of lettuce. Okay. Got some more tomatoes coming on here. Well, I suppose uh, this video is not particularly interesting at this point. There's just tons of barley everywhere, and tons of crimson clover everywhere, and mustard flowering. A big weedy mess and there's like tomatoes flopping all over the ground because I didn't stake them and <clears throat> there's all kinds of stuff growing out here but it's uh kind of just like foraging at this point. Um, this was like our corn patch that was intercropped with corn beans and sunflowers. I guess it's doing okay. See there's some corn growing. I think this is a evergreen stowel sweet corn. I also got a little tomato over here and some sugar cane. And there's some pole beans in that mound over there and some switch chard in that bucket right there and some barley back there and some other stuff. But I'm hoping the pole beans, you know, don't 
outpace the corn and the sunflowers. I should have planted the pole beans later than the corn and the sunflowers, but I just planted it all in the same day, so <clears throat> it was a little bit of a mistake, but I just wanted to plant it all. I'm particularly concerned about timing. So many tomatoes and fabric pots that just look like they're going to be much happier than they are in plastic buckets most years. Damn wasps and hornets always stinging me. It's a big old collard green. Uh, I got too much spearmint. Need to do something with all that. Anyway, thank you all for tuning in to Primitive Organic Garden today. Hopefully we will have a more exciting video update next week and possibly some music to go along with next week's video. I had to pull this purple bell pepper out of the big pot it was in yonder because the sun chokes were just destroying it and it was getting out competed. So I yanked it out of the pot with the sun chokes and the clover and put it in its own new pot. And there'll be a little bit of transplant stress, but at least it won't get out competed now. So anyway, thank you all for uh, tuning in and hope you had a nice Easter. I know a lot of people start planting their warm weather crops on Good Friday. So. If that's you, if you're somebody up north who's just now starting to plant your warm weather crops, hope you had a great planting day. And, you know, we're in for a, a really nice season. I think it's going to be a, a nice, warm growing season, and hopefully we won't have too much flooding, and hopefully we won't have too many days of triple-digit temperatures, and it'll just be a, a pleasant, productive season with low insect pressures and fairly low weed pressures if it manages to stay dry for a change so thank you all for uh, tuning in today and i promise next week's video update will be more interesting um, i redid this little herb garden on the patio this is my perennial uh, purple flowered chives and i got some oregano and basil and dill and rosemary and a little bit of collard and this is just kind of my I'm feeling real lazy one night and I don't want to come outside and go out in the garden in the dark I can just open the back door and grab some chives and garlic and oregano and rosemary and dill and microgreens off the porch without having to uh, venture out into the open wilderness back here as it may be you know anyway thank you all for uh, tuning in today and we'll be harvesting our first tomatoes today and that's very exciting and hope everything's going well with your gardening season this spring and keep in touch. Cheers. <laughs>